All right, my name is uh, Clarence Moy, and I'm with Awards Daily. Hello. Hi, Clarence. Hello. Hi, Kim. Hi, Bob. Nice to meet both of you face you to face. So I have to tell you that uh, I sat down with my family watching um, Dog Days, and uh, my son is 17, my daughter's 13, but they have grown up with Up, and they laughed and loved it as much as they had since I think they were five and seven. <laughs> so oh, good. Uh, oh, tremendous. Good. <laughs> It was, it was great fun to watch with the family. I have to say that. Oh, thank you. Um, so, Kim, I'd like to start with you. Why do you think the legacy of Doug and Carl Fredrickson have lasted these 10 plus years since we've last visited them and up? Oh, I think they are the way up ended. Um, just seeing Carl find a new lease on life, new things to live for, knowing to have new adventures, to have this uh, lovely new friend in his life. I mean, too, with Russell, but especially with Doug. I think that is just a universal um, emotion that we can all relate to. And I think that's why those characters are so beloved and um, that we can still relate to them today. So uh, this question is to either one of you who feels best suited to answer it. Why, what was the driving force behind revisiting them in this Disney Plus series now? Well, it was me. I pitched the series and, and um, I think uh, I had just missed being with this cast of characters. I, I was a writer, co-director of Up and, and I just missed performing Doug. I missed Carl I'm sorry, Carl Asner. <laughs> Ed Asner. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, Put him together with that character so closely that I can see why I made that mistake. And um, you know, coming off of Forky asked a question, I just thought, well, this this would be like a nice, comfy, like robe to put on just to to revisit uh, Doug. And so I pitched these these shorts, which kind of happened right after up uh, finishes and before the mm -hmm. credits, where you see like Doug and his puppies uh, uh, that are his own. And uh, I just thought that it would make a good fit, especially since people love their dogs. And, uh, you know, there's, there's something magical about that relationship. And so I wanted to go back to that. Absolutely. So where did you obtain the inspiration from what you would explore within each 10 minute segment? Well, literally it was, what would be fun? Doug watching puppies would be fun. Uh, we, we, we've never seen the squirrel, that would be fun. But as we got into these things, we realized that there was sort of themic uh, elements that were cropping up, territoriality uh, with, the, with the squirrel and wanting to obey someone who's telling you to do something. Um, fear, how, does it, how do you get a dog through fear? Mm -hmm. uh, how, what's a dog's superpower of smell? What is that like for him? All these things started organizing as we went. And I realized that the five of them are five sort of facets of, of a dog's inner life. I loved the episode where Russell develops the a version of the collar that allows the animals to speak. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, and I, and I loved did the opportunity to see Russell uh, back yes. in the show. Cause I was at first, I was worried that he wasn't going to be there because yeah. you can't have uh, Doug and, and, and Carl without Russell. Um, so Bob, you, you did, you mentioned Forky asks a question. You did win an Emmy um, last year for that, that short series. Um, what did you learn on that as a director um, to bring forward to Doug? Well, I'm trying to think, I mean, uh, I, you know, I learned, basically to deal with um, a shorter, smaller project, less people, mm -hmm. less time. Forkies were all two minutes long, so they're a little bit easier to do. And I wanted to make longer episodes. It felt like Forky was maybe just a little too short. And so these, I wanted to make full episodes, even though there, there are less of them. And you just get used to um, improvising with technology improvising with um, the story? How do you cut something down so that it still as, is as fun or has the same theme, but will fit in, in the window? So it was about, it's a little bit more like live action filmmaking, doing more with less. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I wanna dive into one segment in particular that I found just absolutely brilliant. And then that is the flowers episode where <laughs> Doug you know, sees the fireworks and has the panic attack and then passes out <laughs> yeah. and then goes into what I'll call a fever dream. I don't think he has a fever. I think it's you know his fantasy, his dream world. Yeah. 
Um, what were the inspirations behind that visual or context? You know, just some of it almost felt like old school Fantasia to me. Exactly. Um, I wanted it to be a little bit like Fantasia. Uh, you know, I insist on using uh, known classical music for that. And it seemed that that waltz theme seemed to be great for Doug kind of moving along. It's funny, I also thought about Carol, Carousel of Progress at Disney. I, I wanted it to feel like, you know, the vignettes were just kind of moving by you in a straight line. And there's, there's not a lot of in and out. It's all just sort of moving side to side. And I just like that idea of the simplicity. But, you know, I worked with our editor, Torben Bullock, and, and just a lot of people. And it developed as we went. This idea of flying up to the tennis ball sun kind of came late. And the idea of backmasking Carl came late, you know, and it was a little scarier before it was, you know, Carl gets dragged off by the flowers and blown up. And then so we decided to put in the Carl singing his school song and just making that more pleasant and weird for Doug, but not <laughs> super scary, you know, and uh, but Fantasia was definitely in my mind for for a lot of this. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, I think my final question for the both of you, Kim, let's let's post this to you. Um, you we mentioned before that um, Doug, this this series ha takes place between the end of Up and before Doug, you know, you see in the end credits that Doug has puppies. Um, do, do you imagine that the series will connect the dots? Do will we get to see, you know, Doug fall in love and Doug become a father? Oh, if there were more Dougs? <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, let me think. Um, I can't quite imagine that, but clearly it has happened because it's in the credits. So um, right. <laughs> I think it'd be pretty fun to kind of imagine just how does Doug even meet a delightful lady dog and how does he court? Right. <laughs> and what would that yeah. dog's name be? We have to think about that, you know, it's oh Doug. Oh my gosh, and, that's right. Um, I don't know, I don't know what it would be, but that's something we would have to craft. Okay, After his babysitting experience, I can't imagine him wanting to have kids, puppies of his own. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> well, uh, that's, that's all the questions I had for you today. Thank you so much for the art. Thank you for the, the, uh, the family bonding time that you provided the Moy family and uh, best of luck to you. Oh, thank, thank you so you much. So nice much. meeting you. Take care. All right. Thank bye. You.